Well, howdy there, Internet people. Let's bow again. So today, we are going to talk about some pretty big news, and we're going to answer like 50 of your questions. <laughs> um, I mean, it's one question, but it came in a whole lot since this news came out. Um, so if you have missed the news, it started with hints, hints from officials saying, hey, maybe we're open to uh, restarting negotiations, Israeli officials saying that. Then some reporting came out that the boss of the institute, the boss of Israeli intelligence, um, was actively involved in trying to restart those negotiations. And obviously the question is why? Uh, there, there's a series of events that are all coming together at once. Um, the, the obvious one does have something to do with it, if you are familiar with the, the three captives, um, and we'll get to that. That has something to do with it, but there's a little bit more. There are a lot of reports about the conduct of Israeli troops. There are three incidents that are going to become high profile. Um, one, of course, is the one that's already made it there, and that is the story about three Israelis who were captive, and they were either released or they escaped, but they did not survive an encounter with Israeli troops. Obviously, the families of other captives are very concerned about this development. On top of that, there was a U.S. aid contractor who was reportedly killed by an airstrike. On top of that, there was another incident in a church. All of these coming together are high-profile incidents that might create a lot of pressure. Another thing coming in at the same time is the U.S. call to end major combat operations. Again, if you missed the video over on the other channel, that's hanging up a mission accomplished banner. It doesn't actually mean the end. It means the end of this phase, of the major phase, there will be a lot of low-intensity stuff after that. So there's that. And then there's the thing that people may not want to admit it is going to put a lot of pressure on Israel. That's shipping companies deciding to avoid using the Red Sea. It's foreign policy. It's about power. That includes power coupons. If you are disrupting the trade of a whole bunch of countries, that's a whole bunch of countries that are going to want to put more pressure on you. So if I'm reading this and trying to figure out why all of a sudden they're more interested in negotiations, it's a combination of all of this and Israel wanting to start those negotiations while they're still in a position of strength and they have some time to negotiate. If the pressure gets too much, they're in a weakened position at the table. Um, that's my best guess. Now, keep in mind, we don't actually know the, we don't know the thought process behind this. My guess is that all of these things combined are putting that pressure on them. Um, how, how productive this is going to be is anybody's guess. Um, we, we don't even know that they will be restarted. But we know that the reporting suggests that Israel is not only open to it, but they're actively pursuing it. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.